So I've been thinking about it a little bit lately, and I decided that instead of just simply talking about a topic, why don't we instead implement that topic into a series of questions? So you're ever just sitting there in your science class and you're like, when will I need to learn this in life? Like, when, when will I use this in life? And I've always done that too. Like, I've always wondered, when will I need to know that the mitochondria is power as a cell? Why is it important? When will I ever need that in my life? And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to implement that into a question. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a software that or a program that will input will output a person's graduation. Year. So hopefully that makes sense. We're doing this all through user input, which is done through the scanner class. And that is basically our what this all centers on. This all centers on the scanner class. So with that being said, um, I think that's pretty much it. The scanner class just takes in user input and then the computer will read it and then it will output something based on what you code. And if you've seen my Python user input video, the exact same thing, we're just doing it in a different programming language. I think that's pretty much it. If you like this, if you like this way of explaining a lesson, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I actually really think that this is a lot better than just simply talking about a lesson and all the methods and everything. So let's get started. So we have an FRQ right here. An FRQ is just an acronym for free response questions. And our answer is just pretty much going to be an essay long like paper filled with code that answers these three questions. So let's do it. For all questions, assume that each person attends an American high school that consists of 12 grade years. Note that American high schools start at the beginning of September and go all the way till June. Riley was born on April 21st of 2004. She wants to know the year she will graduate high school. Write a program that will allow Riley to input her birth year and a program that will be able to output her high school graduation year. Well, this isn't that bad at all. We know that Riley has to be able to input her graduation or her birth year, sorry. Since we know that Riley needs to input her graduation year, that means we can't hard code it and make an integer called birth year and make it equal to 2004. We have to actually ask Riley her birth year. And the way to do this is by using the scanner class. The way to use their scanner class in Java is that you have to import it. Since the scanner class is located within the java.util package, and the java.util package is not located, is not in the, jo the Java development kit or the JDK, we have to import it. Hopefully that made sense. So to basically, to sum things up, the java.util package is not located within the JDK. Therefore, we have to actually import it. And the scanner class is a class located in the java.util package. Whoops, my bad. So now that I've imported a scanner, we can then be ready to create a scanner. So I'm gonna create a scanner, I'm gonna call it S, and I'm gonna equal it to a new scanner, and I'm gonna make that scanner equal system.in. Okay, we are good to go. Now what we have to do is we have to create an integer called birth year. Once we have created an integer called birth year, the next thing that we need to do is we need to ask a question. By the way, we are creating an integer called birth year because Riley needs to respond with her birth year and then the computer will read that integer called birth year and then it will come out with her graduation year. So let's print that. And I'm gonna full screen this. What year were you born? Okay, after that, the next thing that we need to do is we need to make our birth year equal rs. Int. Shouldn't be that bad. So what the next int is, is that it is a method located within the scanner class. You can find all the methods with the scanner class in the scanner API. The API is just an acronym for the application programming interface, and you'll find all the methods within a certain class. If you know the arrays, you can find all the methods with the arrays to the array API from any data structures like stacks, queues, array lists, link lists, all those kind of things. You can find you can find all the methods for those in the API, and you can learn the syntax or how to create a scanner. All that is within the API. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you're interested. But other than that, let's go ahead and continue. So so far, what have we done? We have created an integer called birth year that will allow Riley to input her birth year, the computer will read that, and then respond with her graduation year, her high school graduation year. 
And then we have created a scanner. We've created a scanner and called it S. Then the computer is going to print into the terminal, when was Riley born? It's going to ask her. Then the computer is going to read Riley's response or the user. And then the next thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to print out her graduation year. Okay, and there we go, we have it. So you see that grad year has a red line and that is obviously because grad year is not initialized. So here's the trick to this problem. The trick is, is that you have to know how American schools work. Oh, by the way, this is the answer. I don't wanna open it. <laughs> okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and continue, like I said. We're going to create an integer called grad year, and we're going to make it our birth year, plus 18. And we're going to compile that. And then it's going to output her graduation year. So I lost my train of thought, but basically 95% of the time in American schools, your graduation year will be your birth year plus 18. Because you are 18 years old by the time you graduate, or 17, whatever it is, you are probably that age when you graduate. Your age will change depending, it will scale with your graduation year and stuff like that. But 95% of the time, your graduation year will be your birth year plus 18. If you're wondering what the 5% exception is, it's like if you got held back a grade, if you skipped a grade, if you got bridged a grade, all those kind of stuff. But in reality, 95% of the time, your graduation year will be your birth year plus 18. Since it does not say that Riley skipped a grade or anything like that, we can just assume that her birth year or graduate her grad year is her birth year plus 18. So what year was she born? 2004. And she will graduate high school in 2022. However, note that we are not completely done yet. What if we decide to say that we were born in like, I don't know, some gibberish? It's going to print out that. And we don't want it to print out one whatever you read that number you can read that on your own i'm too lazy to read that so you know the drill so we don't want that so here is when we create a restrictive case is what i like to call it and what a restrictive case does is that it basically will restrict the user from typing whatever he wants so what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of what we wanted to do so what we want to do is we want to create a restrictive case that makes birth year greater than 2000 or less than 2000 and 2000 and 3000 are exclusive meaning they are not included so we're going to do the opposite of that so birth year is less than 2000 and birth year is greater than 3000 by the way this means the and symbol that means both of these have to be true and then we have a not symbol which just means the opposite so both of these have to be false so now that we have that done we can print our restrictive case and we're going to print something along the lines of try again, something like that. And the reason why we're doing this in a while loop is because if, if they keep guessing it wrong, we have to keep printing out the try again, try again, try again, until they actually guess something that is within the restrictive case. Be sure to guess an integer that is between 2000 and 3000 exclusively. It's not guess, by the way. It's be sure to respond to your birth year with an integer. The reason why I said 2000 and 3000 is because typically high school students are born above 2000 as of now. And um, there aren't any high schoolers in like 3000, but I just made a restrictive case just because I felt like if you want to put some funny gibberish, whatever, but it has to be less than 3000 and greater than 2000 and the opposite of that. So it has to be less than 2000 and greater than 3000. Okay, sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and run this now. What year were you born? You just type in this. Okay, so here's another thing I forgot to mention. So we're just gonna be stuck in an infinite loop of this statement. And the way to fix this is we just have to have the computer read the user's next statement. And there we go. So let's run that. Just do that. There we go. So we just do a constant while loop of them having to try again. 
until we get to 2004, and then it will print Riley's graduation year. So now, the one last thing I want to talk about is, I like to call it another kind of restriction case, but what it really is, is an error. So let's say we type in a string, just for fun. And what we'll get is we'll get an error, or what Java likes to call it, it will throw an exception. When Java throws an exception, it basically means that it will not be able to solve it, and it will terminate the whole process. So the way to solve this is we can either make our own exception or we can just make an error or we can just make our own error statement. So the way to do this is we have to use a try catch. By the way, apparently you need to use exceptions in this problem. I have not talked about exceptions yet, so I understand if you're confused, but just basically know that you can make your own exceptions or you can like kind of make your own errors. You can throw an exception if something doesn't work. Um, I will probably push this to an earlier time when I explain this because this code will make a lot more sense if you just understand how the try catch and how to make exceptions and all that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a try catch. And what this is going to do is that the computer is going to try reading the user's input. If it does not, if it's not an integer, then what it's going to happen is that it's going to throw an exception. An exception is just a formal word for an error. Like I said, if you just respond some random gibberish and, and the computer is obviously programmed to take in an integer, just like we said here. Next int just basically means that the computer is programmed to take in an integer. However, if you put in like a string or something like that, the computer won't be programmed to take it. And instead, it will terminate the whole process and print an exception. An exception, like I said, is just another formal word for an error. I just need you to get that down. It's just a way of saying it's an error. Java will just throw in an exception. So what we're going to do is we're going to catch an exception and we're going to call it E. What we're going to do now is we are going to throw an exception to the user. We're going to make our own exception and we're going to throw it to the user. And so what we can see right here, and we're going to make an exception and we're going to call it input mismatch exception. This is just a type of exception. And what it basically means is that input mismatch exception means that the computer was expecting an integer, but you inputted some other data type. So we're going to catch an input mismatch exception. And we're going to throw put mismatch exception. And we're just going to say, your response should be a integer that is 2000 to 3000 exclusive. And by the way, this statement will allow us to throw our own custom error. And by the way, we will have to import the input mismatch exception. I kind of did lie when I said I didn't do this before. I actually did do a little test sample to make sure the whole program was working and made sure I was able to respond to the question. So I did kind of lie a little bit, but needless to say, let's still go. So input mismatch exception. Let's go ahead and do it. And let's run it. So what this is just gonna this what this is just gonna do is that it's gonna throw an exception. So let's say we just decide to type in some random gibberish. What this is gonna do is that it's going to throw in a custom exception. So it's going to throw it in and it's going to say, your response should be an integer that is 2000 to 3000 exclusive. I understand if you're still confused. I haven't talked about exceptions yet. I haven't talked about exception handling. So if you don't know how that works, it's all good. Just understand that you can throw an exception to the computer if, you don't, if it's a response that you don't like or you don't want in your program. So let's say like we did not want the user to input a string. And since we didn't want that, we can throw an exception to the computer and the computer will take in that and we'll give it to the, and we'll output it to the user. So that's pretty much it. We are done with the first part. We have done our restrictive case. We have done our exception and we have done what exactly what we need to do. So now we know that Riley will graduate high school in 2022. So let's go ahead and move on to our next question or our next part of the question. Riley's best friend Paige was born on October 27th of 2003. Modify your program from part A that will allow Riley and Paige to input their birth months 
and their birth years so that it correctly prints out their high school graduation year. Or it correctly prints out Paige's high school graduation year. Keep in mind that Paige and Riley will graduate Paige and Riley will graduate high school the same year. So that means if Paige gradu if Riley graduated high school in 2022, Paige will graduate high school in 2022. So let's go ahead and code that. That might seem a little bit complicated, but the way to fix the the way to solve this question is to first know how American schools work. And it tells us that in the beginning. Note that American high schools start at the beginning of September and go all the way till June. So this is where it kind of gets a little tricky to understand. I know this question can be a little, if you don't go to American schools, this question can be hard to digest because you don't know how exactly American schools work. But if you do go to American schools, it should make it a lot more easier for you. So let's say, for example, you were born in, let's say like your page, you're born in October of 2003 and you're Riley and you're born in April of 2004. Since American high schools go from September the previous year to May or June the next year, all those people will be included in that graduating class. So although Paige is born a year before Riley, since the American schools go from September all the way to May and their birthdays are included in that, in that range, they will graduate in the class of 2022. So we know that they'll graduate in 2022 and we know that we just know that they will graduate in the same year in general, even though their years are a one difference. So what this means is that we are going to have to create a statement and we're going to have what month were you born? And then what we're going to do is we're going to, I haven't defined birth month. Let me go ahead and do that. We go and make that equal to the next integer that the user input so the computer will read that okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead scroll all the way down here and we're gonna do an if statement so because American schools start in September and they go all the way to December but it's the previous year of the next year so let's say um you have all the kids from September to December they will be born a year before all the kids from January to August. Keep in mind that people who have birthdays in July and August will also be included. So if you're August, July, August of 2004, you'll still be the class of 2022. You will be graduating in 2022 still. That's just how American schools work. So in that situation, that shouldn't be that bad to code. And that's just if your birth month is greater than or equal to nine and your birth month is less than or equal to 12, you're gonna add an extra year to your, to your birth year, to your grad year. So you're gonna make your grad year equal your birth year plus 18. We don't have to keep on initializing our grad year. So we can just avoid that by making our grad year equal zero. There we go. And then we don't have to initialize this again because we already set our grad year to a temporary storage value, which is zero. So, if our birth month is less than or equal to nine, so if it's September and it goes all the way from October to November to December, then we're gonna add an extra year to that, so plus 19. And then we're gonna do an else statement. And we're gonna print that. And we should be good to go. We just need to add a print statement. We will copy this. And by the way, by the 5% exception, I also meant this. This is the term called bridging, if you haven't known, if you haven't noticed. So basically what this means is that um, if your birthday falls below or above the certain um, requirement that it takes for the month that starts school, then they will bridge you and all that stuff. So that is the 5% exception. That is part of it. We'll talk about another part of the exception in the next question. So let's compile and run. Okay, now it's gonna ask what month were you born? So it wasn't specific. So I'm gonna say respond with a single digit. One for January, two for February, etc., etc. And the reason why I did this is because I coded it so that if the computer reads the response as nine, and it's greater than or equal to nine, 
Well, the computer has to read a nine first in order to com in order to compute this if statement and print out Paige's graduation year. So that's why I need to make sure I tell the user how to respond to the month they were born. So let's rerun it. Let's rerun this. What month were you born? Respond with single digit. What for January, two for February, et cetera, et cetera. Paige was born in October. What year was she born? 2003. She'll graduate high school in 2022. Simple as it is, we still have two more things to do. The first thing you have to do is you have to create a restrictive case. Our restrictive case is just a while loop. So let's do it. Let's do a while loop. And what this while loop is going to be is that it's just going to be birth month is greater than or equal to 13 or birth month equal equal zero. Print line, try again, make sure you input a birth month from one to 12, since there are 12 birth months, since there are 12 months in a year, one to 12 inclusive. Keep in mind that inclusive just means they're included, exclusive means they're not included. So there you go. We have done a restrictive case. Keep in mind that we will have to do a next int method because the computer has to read that the user's response. So we're gonna make birth month equal our next int. Okay, we're done now. Let's run it. One month were you born? Let's just write some random gibberish. And then let's say 2003. You'll graduate high school in 2021. So our, our, we're so far good to go. The last thing that we have to do is we have to make, we have to throw our own exception, our custom exception. And this is for when you decide to do an input mismatch exception, whenever you decide to put like a string, we're going to get this really, really long error. Instead, what we can do is we can explain that error. So basically when we're, when we're throwing our own exception, we're just explaining what the error is. Since Java is not very good, I say, I quote good it it you can still read that you can still understand error but you can throw like your own kind of exception that will tell what went wrong so that's what we're gonna do again we're gonna try this block of code so that means that you the computer is gonna read that then we're gonna create a catch for that we're gonna create an input mismatch exception we're gonna call it e and then what we're going to do here is we are going to say, what is it? Throw new input mismatch exception. Um, your response should be an integer that is between 1 to 12 inclusive. Inclusive since there are 12 months in here. Okay, now we have thrown our own exception. One month we were born. And now we have thrown our custom exception, explaining what the user has to do. Keep in mind that this will terminate it. So now we know Paige is born in October, her 2003. She will graduate high school in 2022. And we know that this is correct because we know that Paige and Riley were supposed to graduate the same year. And since Riley graduated in 2022, Paige will graduate in 2022. Finally, move on to the last part. Riley's boyfriend, TJ, was born on March 15th of 2005. However, TJ skipped first grade and is supposed to be graduating high school the same year as Riley and her best friend, Paige. Modify your program from part B so that it correctly prints TJ's high, school's, TJ's high school graduation year. Well, we know TJ graduates in 2022 as well, because if Riley graduated in 2022, Paige graduated in 2022, 
and Riley and Paige are supposed to graduate the same year as TJ. We know TJ graduates in 2022. So let's modify our program. The first thing that we need to do is we need to create a skip grade, an integer called skip grade. Once we have created an integer called skip grade, the next thing that we have to do is we need to ask the user if they skipped a grade or not. So let's ask the user, did you skip a grade? Keep in mind, you can do this as a Boolean, but I like to make it easier and make it an integer. One for yes, you skipped a grade, or two for you did not skip a grade. Or zero, sorry, I should make this a zero. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to make skipped grade equal our next end. Okay, after that, the next thing we have to do is we just have to create another if statement. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say if skipped grade equal equal one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna print we're gonna make grad year equal your birth year plus 17. So if you skipped a grade, you're obviously gonna shed off one year from your original graduating year. TJ was supposed to graduate high school in 2023, but since he skipped a grade, he's actually gonna graduate in 2022. So we have to shed one year off that. If you skip two grades, you shed two years. If you skip three grades, you shed three years and so on and so forth. But since it says TJ only skipped first grade, we just have to add 17. And then we can just copy the statement. Okay, seems good to me. And then we can create an else if, which is another Boolean expression that will, which will input another Boolean expression. And then we can just copy all of this. Oh, whoops, I forgot to copy. Copy that. We don't need an else there anymore because we're going to, we're going to ask the user every time if they skipped a grade or not. And they are forced to answer one or zero. They cannot answer anything else. So that's why if we just include an if and an else if, we're good to go. So we can just delete that and copy it into here. And there we go. We are good to go. So let's run that. What month was TJ born? TJ was born in March 2005. Did TJ skip a grade? Yes, he skipped first grade and he will graduate high school 2022. And that is correct because he is supposed to be graduating the same year as Riley and Paige. And since they both graduated 2022, TJ graduates in 2022. We're good, but we're not done. We are still missing two other things. And you know what they are, our exception and a restrictive case. So let's do that. Let's make a while loop. So we're going to say while skipped grade equal, equal, what should we say? I'm going to say while skipped grade does not equal zero. It shouldn't be equal, equal zero. And it's an or, right? Yeah, or it's, oh, it's an and, it's an and. Oh, grade does not equal one. System.out.println. Try again. Make sure you input a zero if you did not skip a grade or a one if you did skip a grade, period, semicolon. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make skip a grade equal our next end. And we're done. What month were you born? TJ was born in March, born. 2003, just skip a grade, two, two, okay, and one. Graduate high school, hmm, that's odd. Why is that happening? Was born, teacher was born in March, five, yes. Oh, I think it's because I put 2003, that's why. I inputted the wrong year teacher was born. My apologies. But there we go. 
we're just missing our exception. So let's go ahead and code an exception. So we're going to make our own exception. We're going to make a try block under this. The computer is going to try the set of code. And then if it doesn't work, we're going to, we're going to have the computer catch an input mismatch exception. E and then we're going to make a print message. Or we're not, we're not going to do the print message. We're going to throw an exception. I like to throw an exception, an exception rather than just print the error. It just makes it look kind of cool. But you can, you can throw a custom error through a string. But I like to use the throw keyword, and the throw keyword will, will throw an exception. So let's say your response should be an integer that is either zero if you skip a grade or one if you did not skip a grade. Okay, and now that we have thrown our exception, we are done. Let's now run that. And let's do that. Let's run that again. Oh, whoops. I just meant to do some all that. There we go. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Run that. Okay. Our exception is working. Born. TJ was born in March 2003. Oh, whoops. He was born in 2005. I keep thinking he was born in 2003. 2005. He skipped a grade and he will graduate in 2022. And that is it. We have finished our long, lengthy response to the three questions. And we can verify that they are all correct because they all graduate the same year. And that year is 2022 with all the current seniors this year. So you're almost there to graduation. Keep on going. Riley, TJ, and Paige, you're almost done with your senior year. And yeah, that's it. We're done. So if you like this video, be sure to sub to the channel. Um, I'm going to push out some videos like this. If you like this way, I feel like this way is a lot better. It's more lengthy, but I feel like it's a lot easier to understand and learn. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.